You're listening to the Time to Level Up podcast. I'm your host, business life coach, Andrea Libros. I help women in business commit to their own growth personally and professionally. Each week, I'll bring you strategies to help you think clearly, gain confidence, make your time productive, turn every obstacle into an opportunity, and finally overcome the overwhelm so that you can make money and manage life. Let's create a plan so you have a profitable business, successful career, and best of all, live with unapologetic ambition. Are you ready to drop the drama and figure out the how in order to reach your goals? You're in the right place. It's time to level up. Let's do this. Hey, welcome to the podcast. I am super excited to be here once again, and I'm actually recording this podcast at the beginning of January. So I feel like I have a new pep in my step and my brain is also moving at a thousand miles a minute. But I have learned that if I pause and I picture there being like this big red pause button, if I pause and I press the button and I write down a few of my thoughts in my journal. It really brings me clarity and it decreases the speed of my brain. So I've learned that trick and it works. Well, today I wanted to share with you a concept that I have been getting clearer and clearer on over the past few weeks, and I want to share it with you as a way for you to better understand how the women I work with become empowered and how they change. And I hope it will be one of those aha moments for you, as it was a few friends of mine uh, at Pickleball. Yes, I do play pickleball. And yes, we were discussing what I do all day. And once I kind of explained it this way and how women can change some of their thinking so that their brain is operating on full power, it was eye-opening to them. So I think I've mentioned on the podcast before that we have a Peloton. And I'm on that Peloton quite a bit, or I'm using the Peloton app to access classes. And one of the instructors I really like is Robin. And the other day during a strength workout, she was making the point that what we were doing was not a workout. We should not be using that word workout, but rather what we were doing was training because we are always training our bodies to perform better so that we can have better health and fitness. So I kind of thought, huh. What I'm doing every day is helping women train their brains so that they can have optimum mental health and they can be ready for the next thing or challenge that life brings them. So this really stuck with me. This happened all in the same weekend as this pickleball discussion. And I've noticed that after working with clients for a little while, or maybe even for you after listening to several episodes of the podcast, What you are really doing is training your brain to perform at a top level. You're training your brain to better face the challenges that are in front of you or even ahead of you. And really, the better trained we are, the easier these challenges are to face and the more amazing our lives are, the more success we experience and the less stress we have and the longer we're able to maintain that level of success, really both physically and mentally. So my goal as what one might call a mental trainer, just like Robin on Peloton is training us physically, is to really help women become empowered and trust themselves, okay, so that they can create the life they want personally and professionally. It's not my job as their quote unquote mental trainer to tell them what to do because that's not really training. And I don't give them all the pieces of the puzzle. I don't tell them what every step should be. And this just this week occurred, a client messaged me and said, what do you think I should do? Here is the response I got after I sent the email. And I responded back to her. And we've been working together for a while, so this wasn't day one. What do you think you should do? And then she messaged me back. Well, 
I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. And I messaged her back. Which one do you want to do? So when I let my clients or guide my clients to become empowered to guide themselves to make their own decisions and to follow through on them, that really is an example of receiving the best training. That's what I want them to be doing. So when they start to make all these decisions on their own, it feels good. Okay. Now think about this. No one likes to be told what to do, right? No one likes their ideas being questioned. We don't like feeling threatened. Okay. And we don't want those negative emotions that sometimes come up when our own decision-making power is threatened, right? When someone says to you, no, you can't do that, no matter really what it is, we all feel some negative emotion. We all feel a little threatened. That might be strong, but in some cases not. So guess what? Here's the news. In reality, you are never being threatened. That feeling of threatened is really one that you are creating by the way you're thinking. Because remember, our thoughts create our own feelings. But often, you know, we don't want to own the fact that we create our own feelings. And so we are showing up in the world the way we show up in the world or our results or whether we reach the goal or not is impacted, okay, when we don't want to own the fact that we create our own feelings and our own results. Because when you do recognize that your thoughts create your feelings, then all of a sudden, you have to become responsible and accountable for yourself. And that can be a little scary. And I talked about this in episode six, I think, uh, the episode on emotional adulthood. That's when we decide we need to be responsible. Okay, so go review that episode if you haven't listened to it. But I want you to know what I'm not saying is that you can't or you're not allowed to experience these negative feelings and you're not allowed to experience the feeling of being threatened or confused or frustrated or overwhelmed. And instead, you should be happy all day. I am not saying that. That is not the case. If we were happy all the time, we would be missing out on truly half of life. Because remember, life's 50-50, half positive, half negative. So what I'm saying is that we can train our brain to have the best experience possible within the life we are given. We can train our brain to fully experience everything, positive and negative, and understand how we have power over any situation. So I'm going to show you how this is actually possible, and hopefully it will uh, help you understand this concept even further. So. Here's my analogy. And since I use a lot of sports analogies, I'm going to go back to using the game of tennis. Okay. Now, I am guessing that if you are a tennis player, you would want to be a player who will be ready for any game situation, meaning it doesn't matter who the opponent is. It doesn't matter what the level of play is. It doesn't matter who the fans are. You're ready for any umpire. You're ready for any level of perceived pressure, okay? So that's who you probably want to be. But in reality, okay, there are three types of players or there are three places on this spectrum that I'm going to call. I'm going to call this concept picture like a, I picture kind of like a yardstick, okay, with the zero in the middle or an axis if we're talking about geometry, zeros in the middle, and then there's either end, okay? So there are players on either end of the spectrum, and then there are those in the middle. And the ones in the middle always kind of appear calm, cool, collected, and even confident, all right? And you know who I'm talking about if you've watched any tennis. Nadal, Federer, right? They always appear, for the most part, given the stage they're playing on, calm, cool, collected, and confident. Now, there are days when they don't have power, okay? They do not feel empowered or they don't even have physical power. And we usually can actually see it. There are probably days they don't even want to play. Now, I'm human 
And I can see that sometimes I am like this in my own business or in my own household interactions. Okay, I can lean from one extreme to the other. And I'm talking about how we feel, we can feel totally different things. I'm going to explain those feelings. But when I talk to the women in my coaching groups committed to growth and level up, I know that I'm not alone. We all experience all the different feelings along this continuum or spectrum. So we do a lot of talking about all that in this group setting, and they they receive a lot of coaching on it. So here's the thing. On one end of the spectrum is the player who blames the umpire, the weather, the opponent, even the fans on his outcome of the match and how he feels. This is like when you blame your kids for causing you to yell at them, or you blame your clients for making you feel overworked and underpaid, right? When you blame your coworkers for why the project didn't get done, or why going to work every day is not so pleasant. You're blaming others. You're blaming it's all about the coworkers. That's the place or the end of the continuum that is the place of blame. It is one extreme. And a lot of my clients, when they first come to me, and I'm, I'm reading their initial intake forms, they are thinking and feeling this way because they can't quite understand why their business is not successful or why they are feeling so overwhelmed. So they are blaming external things, okay? It must be something outside of me. Must be something outside of me. But then on the other end of the spectrum is the player who is so ashamed of the way he has played in the past or his performance or his slow rate of improvement or no improvement despite all the practicing he's been doing. And that player, he just gives up. He is ashamed and he is feeling guilty. All right. And I see this in the women who come to me and say, what is wrong with me? Notice they're not saying someone else made them the way they are. They're saying, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get my act together? Why can't I create a successful business? Why can't I get all the laundry put away? Why do I feel like there is never enough time and I am running around like a chicken with my head cut off? This is really the other end of the spectrum of emotion. And we really, as humans, can go from one end to the other in a matter of seconds. Okay, so we can also be blaming others, remember, for what's happening in one area of our life and feeling ashamed or guilty in another area of our life. So it's not as if you're a person who's on one end or the other for everything. You can be at work. You can be asking yourself, why can't I get this done? What's wrong with me? I have all the tools and resources at my disposal. And then at home, you could be saying, I just can't keep this house clean because these kids, they just, they're all over the place all the time. Or I don't know why I feel like I am never caught up at home. And I know why you're saying because it's all these other people in your house. So when we are on one end of the spectrum, we don't have the awareness that this being in the middle stuff is even a possibility. We think the whole world, every decision is outside of our control. And external things are controlling our emotions and our day to day. And really, this is totally taking away all of our power, okay? It is disempowering. It is not putting in your best training efforts because you're blaming COVID for actually not even doing any physical exercise, okay, any training. And you may not even be aware that subconsciously you are even blaming COVID. So we start saying things like, if COVID hadn't happened, or if I had worked for a different boss, or if I had more resources or more time, if I had more clients, if I was given a different opportunity, I would feel better then, 
or have more success then. Okay, so when a woman comes to me and says things like this, I teach her that we create our own results. We create how we show up. We create our own lives by controlling how we think. And that is so empowering. That piece right there is life changing. And it's really why I love what I do. Because it's when a woman realizes that what we are doing is not just a workout, okay, or not just a conversation. It is training them to become even more amazing than they are now, to lead a life they want to lead. because. They are learning how to control their thoughts about all of these external things, okay? And then I have the woman that comes to me with what I call lack of acceptance and feels guilty or shame around her own reality, okay? So the other side of the coin is lack of awareness. This is really lack of acceptance. They have not accepted that they are creating these feelings. And this is disempowering too, because we start judging ourselves and we play the compare and despair game. We are disappointed all the time in ourselves. And we say things like, I should know this, or I should be farther along, or I should be making more money. I should be able to handle this on my own. I shouldn't yell at my kids. And often we don't know how to stop thinking and feeling this way. And sometimes we just, can't feel any different than we do right then and there. Like we feel trapped or stuck. So what we really want is to be in the middle, okay? We want to have complete awareness and total acceptance. We want to say to ourselves, I feel frustrated because I am thinking this thought. It is the thought about my opponent or about the pandemic or about my competitor or about my whatever that is creating this feeling of overwhelm, okay? We might say, I'm overwhelmed because I'm thinking that good moms should be a certain way, that I should be doing certain things in my house, or I should have already accomplished this. These are all just thoughts. And all of this It's really okay that you're feeling that way because now if you are feeling that way and have gotten to the place of being in the middle, you know there is a middle, right? You know that it's really just your thoughts that are causing all these feelings. It is not the kids or COVID or your boss, okay? So you might be saying to yourself, well, why don't we do this already? Like, what's the problem? And The reason that we're not doing this already, well, there are different reasons. On the shame or the lack of acceptance side, it's because our brains think that the best way to change, to create change, is to judge ourselves, to show ourselves what's wrong, and to notice how it could be better. And then we think, if I just blah, 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 you will be motivated to be better, right? Sometimes this is where people call on willpower, okay? So I really want you to ask yourself, when you are highly critical of your own actions or the way you feel, does that really help you? Does that work? Does that change the way you're doing things? So this is when you say to yourself, Well, I know I'm doing this wrong and I know I have the potential to do it better. And I think if I just blah, 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 then it'll all happen. All right. So some of you say like, yeah, that does actually help me. But I want you to question, (laughs) does it help you in the long run? Okay. Does it help you in the long run? Does that kind of motivation that allowed you to get more done today than you did yesterday, does that kind of motivation last, okay? Does it get you to where you want to ultimately be? So it may help in the short term, but it never helps in the long term. So sometimes I could tell my clients, just if you 
decided to not beat yourself up, to not punish yourself, to not try to willpower it to the finish line. So let's just say we're talking about uh, your business and you would say, I should be making more money because I have been at this for so long. I would say to you, what if we just drop the part that I have been at this for so long? Or what if you said, I should be making more money right, right now because I have all of the certifications and, and schooling. What if we dropped, I have all the certifications and schooling as the reason why you think you should be further along? And when it comes to home, I should be making more family dinners because that's what good moms do. What if we dropped the part about that's what good moms do? That sometimes is like, oh, I can see how that would change things and get me closer to the middle. The next thing I say to some of my clients or the next thing they will say is, what if this goes on forever? Like, what if I just can't make my business run the way I want it to run? What if I never make money? So I say, well, what if you keep thinking that you should be making more money? And that went on forever. Is that very helpful? Is this kind of thinking working for you? The answer is always no. So if they can realize and recognize that the reason they feel discouraged is because of the thought that they should be further along, then we're making progress. We're getting closer to that midline where you can trust yourself to figure out how you can change things in a productive way. You can feel all of the feelings out there, okay? But the growth is in recognizing why you are feeling this way and why you are getting the results you are. And remember, you are human. So there are days when I feel like I am killing it, and then there are days when I feel like I am failing. There are days when I think I am truly mother of the year. And then there are days when I ask, who signed me up to be a mother? We're all human. We can embrace all of these feelings and we can learn to be patient with ourselves. And when we're patient, it is so much better and easier to be the person we want to be or to have the business we want to have. Trust me. So I want you to think about this analogy here. Okay, I got this analogy from another coach, Jody Moore, and she this it made me laugh. Okay, so she said, "What have you got in your car?" And you said, "Siri, take me to Target." Okay, well, Siri would not be able to tell you how to get to Target because it doesn't know where you're starting from. It doesn't know, and along the way. We don't even want to, when we're in our own heads, all right, and we ask for direction, sometimes we don't even know where we're starting from. When you tell yourself, like, I sh I'm a terrible mom, I shouldn't be yelling at our kids, we really, what we really don't want to be thinking about is about yelling at our kids. We want to think about when we don't yell at our kids, okay? We don't want to examine the hard stuff, the times when we feel crappy. And we're really kind of unable even to access the subconscious thoughts and emotions that are driving our behavior because we shame it away. We go to that shame side. We cover it up with guilt. And then we like lose access to it. So when Siri says, well, where are you now? Okay, notice Siri doesn't even say, where are you now? And you click the button saying, yes, I'm right here, use my current location. She doesn't say, well, you should really be going to a different target that's closer. You're crazy to go to this far away target, right? It's gonna take you forever to get to that far away target. And you know what? You should be going to the closer one. You shouldn't go to the six mile away one, okay? Siri doesn't care which target you're going to. She's like, okay, you're here. I see you in the blue dot, okay? And she actually doesn't even really ask you where you are. She says, should I go from your current location, right? So she's assuming you've got a starting point. Sometimes we don't even know where our own starting point is when, we, when it comes to our thoughts. But Siri says, okay, you're here. All right, here's the way to target. That's how I want you to think about the work we're trying to do here to empower you so we don't 
judge you. There's a difference between empowering and judging where you're at. So the more you recognize where you are and love where you are now, the easier it is to get where you want to go. But you need to be compassionate and curious and patient with yourself. And notice that your GPS is really patient because it allows you to go off track. And it makes it allows you to make wrong turns. And then it calculates getting you back on a route. It's really patient. And it's forgiving. Figures things out for you when you go off track. Okay? So it's going to be so much easier when you recognize why you're not in the middle, why you're on one side of the spectrum or the other, why you're in a place of lack of awareness or lack of acceptance, and then to recognize it's going to take some training of your brain to get back to that middle, calm, cool, collected, and confident. Now, I have been doing my training for a while, right? I have several coaches, and I've gotten better at this, but I am still human. I still feel frustrated and angry and disappointed and confused. So that is where I recommend that you have a coach that is able to show you yourself or that you even just expose yourself to coaching because the more you hear other people enlighten you as to where you are and what you are not aware of, the easier it becomes for you to do this yourself. So Sometimes when I've got a new client and they say, well, how long is this going to last? Like, how long am I going to be in coaching? The goal is that you are not, you know, with me as a coach for, from now until the end of time. The goal is that you can start to do some of this on your own. Now, even though I've gotten really good at it, I still rely on others to show me myself, okay? Because I can never really do this completely for myself or as well as someone else can do it for me because I get in my own way, because remember, I'm human. So we need that outside perspective to get us out of our own way, right? So that I can be in the middle of the spectrum, I can be at the zero, and I can live with complete awareness and acceptance. And these coaches that I have continue to train my brain, right? And I continue to train myself beyond working with them because I now have tools to do that for myself. Kind of like I like to say when you're in the peanut butter jar and you're stuck in the peanut butter, you can't read the label, right? You have lack of awareness or you have lack of acceptance. You can't read what's really going on. You don't see how your own thoughts and feelings are really creating your result for you. So this is really what I do with my clients inside committed to growth group coaching or when we work one-on-one. And it's it's magical work, okay? It is work that makes our lives so much richer in so many ways. So I hope you kind of had that aha moment and saw, you know, how you can be in that middle space of calm, cool, collected, and confident. So please continue to share this podcast to spread this type of thinking and help. And when you do share this podcast, take a screenshot, tag me, and I will give you a shout out. And best of all, if you want to write a review, I so appreciate it because that's how this gets spread even further. And you can always direct message me on Instagram or message me on Facebook or LinkedIn. I will definitely respond to you. And then I want to ask you this. Who is your coach? Who's your coach? Or how are you exposing yourself to coaching? I would be honored to be your coach. So when you're ready to take this kind of thinking to another level, head over to my website and set up a time to talk and find out what the best way is to take it to another level, whether it's group coaching or one-to-one or workshops. There are so many ways to give you the brain training you need to address all of these challenges that make up our human experience and to really help you feel the power you have over your own amazing life. So until next time, remember it is time to level up your thinking. Have a great week. See you next week. 
Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're ready to commit to personal and professional growth, move forward, make money, and manage life, head to andrealibros.com. That's A-N-D-R-E-A-L-I-E-B-R-O-S-S.com to find out about the ways we can work together. Until next time, go level up.